today we're chatting with Asherita Chuchu about her book, Bible and Breakfast. Welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me. It's my joy to be here. Great. Um, was there something in your own routine, your own life, that led to the, the writing of this book? Oh, absolutely. So I have three children, six and under, and I grew up in a Christian family. So from a very young age, I've loved Jesus. I've wanted to spend time in his word. But when my little kids came along, I just felt like my availability, my time available to spend with Jesus shrunk from like any time of day, any time I wanted to these little windows of opportunity. And even those would be interrupted by my children. And I found myself frustrated because I wanted to give God my time first thing in the morning. But after a long night of waking up several several times throughout the night and just feeling chronically sleep deprived, I thought, how God is this supposed to work? Like literally praying and asking God, how do you want me to spend time in your word? And he led me, Martin, instead of trying to get away from my children and trying to force this pre-children formula of how to spend time in God's word an hour all by myself with my Bible and my notebook and my coffee and my commentaries and trying to fit that into a motherhood life, I felt like God was leading me into, well, what would it look like if you invited your children into reading the Bible with you over breakfast? What would it look like if when we feasted our, our bodies on this delicious food, because I'm a bit of a foodie, I, I love food, when we spread out this feast for our children, what if we brought our Bibles to the table too? and invited them to feast on the bread of life. So Martin, that's where it started. And that first year we did a 31 day challenge. I invited my blog readers to join me and we had over a thousand women sign up and say, yes, I, I want to try this too. And it's been several years now that women get together over breakfast with their children. And it just makes my heart so happy to see us feasting our, our souls and our bodies together. Uh, one of the things I noticed about the book is that the, the recipes are relatively quick, relatively easy, they're not <laughs> complex. Uh, I'm sure that's part of what you thought about in, in making it um, something where people can do devotionals um, and dig into the word at the same time. Of course, yeah. So the recipes, there are 31 of our family's favorite breakfast recipes, and they're either recipes you can make ahead of time or recipes that you double up and then you can save in the freezer so you can just pull them out. And that's kind of what I used to model the devotional side of it as well. So on the devotional side, there are snacks that are quick little bites you can grab on the go when you don't have a whole lot of time. And then there are also inductive feasts that are called feast at the table. And that's when you sit down and it's like lingering at the table with God's word. Wonderful. Now, besides um, the devotions and the recipes, there are other aspects of this book that I find very interesting. Explain some of the other features that are in the book. Yeah, so one of the things that um, I wanted to make sure we include in the book is these weekly check-ins that are called Develop a Healthy Habit. And um, I'm a bit of a nerd when it comes to habit formation. I love reading about productivity and how God wired our brains to develop automatic habits. And then taking that secular science and saying, how can we learn and apply this to our spiritual lives? We call them spiritual disciplines. And every new year, so many of us say, well, this year I'm going to read the Bible. This year I'm going to pray. And we get a few weeks in and we feel like every year is just like the last. So instead, my heart with Bible and Breakfast is to say, let's take what we've learned from brain science about how we develop habits and apply it to reading the Bible so that after 31 days of Bible and Breakfast, we continue with this habit. So there are things like making your habit tiny. That's why I included the, the daily snack feature in there because brain science shows us that if you take your habit and you break it down into its smallest increment, uh, it minimizes the brain's resistance. And so you're more likely to be consistent day after day. So do that snack every day. And then when that's established as a habit, then maybe you do the feast. But there are all kinds of little things like that, Martin, in the book that are woven in there. But then every week I encourage readers to pause and say, 
what am I enjoying about this Bible and breakfast habit? Or what do I have to change to enjoy it more, to be more consistent? What can I celebrate with God, the work that he is doing in our lives? Very good. Uh, there's also sp a space for journaling. There's lovely photos in this. What kind of feedback have you had from readers? Um, so this book launched about eight months ago, and I've heard from women around the world that are doing Bible and breakfast with their families. In fact, right now, or in, this is day two of our online Bible study as we're recording this interview. And again, we have over 1,300 women from around the world who are doing Bible and breakfast with their families. And I just love seeing the photos. There are little hands on the book, turning the pages. There's uh, jam spilled on the table because this is real life. But Jesus invites us to come and have breakfast with him. John 21, 21, Jesus said the same to his disciples on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, come and have breakfast. And he invites each of us to do the same thing. So it just fills my heart with joy to see how God took something that was a frustration for me personally a few years ago, and then he transformed it into laying a, preparing a table, laying out a feast for thousands of families around the world to do this together. Wonderful. Well, thank you for doing this, but I do have one more really important question. Um, scramble, poached, fried. <laughs> it depends on the day, Martin. <laughs> but um, I will always have boiled eggs on hand. So at least once a week, we boil a dozen eggs and keep them in the fridge because that's my go-to breakfast. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to tell us about Bible and breakfast. Um, take care during isolation. It was very lovely to meet you online, and thank you for the interview. Thank you so much for having me. Have a blessed day. You too.